Special tests for the knee. For each of these tests, the examiner should always ask permission to examine the patient. Also, for each of these special tests, the contralateral limb should be tested first for base information. The test being performed is the patellar apprehension test. The patient position is supine with both knees fully extended. The examiner's position is opposite of the side being tested. The examiner places the thumbs along the medial border of the patella. The patient remains completely relaxed without any muscle contraction while the examiner gently pushes the patella laterally. A positive finding would be the patient being apprehensive to the movement of the patella or contracting their muscles in fear of a subluxation. A positive test is indicative of a patellar subluxation. The test being performed is the bounce home test. The patient position is supine. The examiner's position is next to the involved knee. The examiner places one hand along the joint line of the knee. The other hand cups the patient's midfoot and heel. The examiner passively flexes the knee. The examiner then allows the knee to passively fall back into extension. A positive finding would be a bouncy extent fall back into extension or a springy block. A positive sign is indicative of a meniscal tear. The test being performed is Godfrey's 90-90. The patient position is supine with both hips and knees in 90 degrees of flexion. The examiner stabilizes the legs with one arm underneath the distal aspects of the legs. The examiner then compares the two tibias. A positive finding would be one tibia or the tibia of the injured knee slightly inferior to the other. A positive finding is indicative of a damaged or sprained posterior cruciate ligament. The test being performed is Clark's sign. The patient position is supine with both knees fully extended. The examiner stands to the side of the involved knee. The examiner places the web space of the thumb along the superior border of the patella. While the patient contracts the quadriceps, the examiner applies a downward and inferior force on the patella. This is a pain reproduction test. If the patient cannot complete the test or feels pain with the movement of the patella, it is a positive test. A positive test is indicative of chondromalacia patella. The test being performed is the sweep test. The patient position is supine with their involved knee fully extended. The examiner's position is alongside the involved patella. The examiner's hands are both placed on the medial aspect of the patella. The examiner then tries to sweep any intracapsular swelling around the patella. The examiner applies pressure to the proximal, distal, and lateral aspects of the knee. A positive finding would be excessive fluid in the knee, which will form a small bulge or wave on the medial aspect of the knee, just inferior to the patella. A positive test is indicative of intracapsular swelling or minimal joint effusion. The test being performed is the acute angle test. The patient lies supine with their hips and knees fully extended throughout the entire test. The examiner identifies the anterior superior spine, the midpoint of the patella, and then the tibial tubercle to the midpoint of the patella. Place the goniometer so that the axis is on the midpoint of the patella. The proximal arm should be on the line to the anterior uh, superior iliac spine, while the distal arm should be on the line to the tibial tubercle. The resulting angle is the Q angle. A normal Q angle for males is 13 degrees with the knee in extension, while the normal Q angle for women is 18 degrees. A positive finding would be a Q angle greater or less so than the normal degrees. This is indicative of a patellofemoral pathology. The test being performed is the reverse pivot shift test. The patient's position is supine with the test knee in 40 to 50 degrees of flexion. The examiner stands with the proximal hand just on the patient's posterior lateral leg just distal to the patella. The examiner's thumb is on or anterior to the fibular head. The examiner's distal hand holds the patient's heel and midfoot. The examiner then externally rotates the tibia with one hand and applies a valgus force with the other while slowly extending the knee. A positive finding will be if the examiner sees the patient's lateral tibial plateau subluxed posteriorly while flexing the patient's knee. 
The subluxation will reduce when the knee extends and approaches a position around 20 degrees of flexion. The lateral tibial plateau will return to a neutral position. A positive finding is indicative of a damaged PCL, FCL, posterolateral lateral capsule, or arcuate complex. The test being performed is the Lotman's test. The patient position is supine with the tested knee in 20 to 30 degrees of flexion. The patient's foot should be planted flat on the table. The examiner stands with their stabilizing hand on the distal thigh and with their moving hand in the popliteal space with their thumb placed on the tibial tubercle. The examiner then applies an anterior force of, to the tibia with their moving hand while stabilizing the femur with the other. A positive finding would be excessive anterior translation of the tibia on the femur as compared to the contralateral limb. A positive finding is indicative of a damaged or sprained anterior cruciate ligament. The test being performed is the anterior door test. The patient position is supine with the testing hip in 45 degrees of flexion and the testing knee in 90 degrees of flexion. The patient's foot should be in neutral position. The examiner's position is sitting on the patient's foot to act as a stabilizer. The examiner's hands are placed behind the knee in the popliteal space with both thumbs on the tibial plateau of the leg. The examiner then applies an anterior force on the tibia. A positive finding would be increased anterior displacement as compared to the contralateral limb. A positive test is indicative of a damaged or sprained anterior cruciate ligament. The test being performed is the valgus stress test. The patient position is supine with the knee fully extended. The examiner's position is to the side of the involved knee. The examiner places the stabilizing hand at the distal medial aspect of the leg. The other and proximal hand is placed at the lateral side of the knee. With the knee in full extension, the examiner applies a valgus force at the knee. Repeat this test with the knee in 20 to 30 degrees of flexion. A positive finding would be more laxity with the valgus movement than at the contralateral limb or pain along the medial aspect of the knee. A positive test is indicative of a damaged or sprained tibial collateral ligament. The test being performed is the varus stress test. The patient position is supine with the knee fully extended. The examiner positions to the side of the involved knee. The examiner places the stabilizing hand at the distal lateral aspect of the leg. The other and proximal hand is placed on the medial side of the knee. With the knee in full extension, the examiner applies a varus force on the knee. Repeat this test with the knee in 20 to 30 degrees of flexion. A positive finding would be more laxity with the varus movement than it compared into the contralateral limb or pain along the lateral aspect of the knee. A positive test is indicative of a damaged or sprained pubular collateral ligament. The test being performed is McMurray's test. The patient's position is supine. The examiner's position is standing alongside the involved knee. The examiner's distal hand is grasping the patient's heel while the proximal hand is on the patient's knee. Their fingers along the medial and lateral joint line. The examiner begins with the knee completely flexed. Then the examiner begins to extend the knee while externally rotating the tibia and applying a valgus force. Then moving the knee clockwise, the examiner begins to move the knee back into flexion, internally rotating the knee and applying a varus force. A positive sign will be a clipping along the medial and lateral joint lines. A click along the medial joint line is indicative of a medial meniscus tear. A click along the lateral joint line is indicative of a lateral meniscus tear. The test being performed is athlete's compression test. The patient's position is lying prone with their test knee in 90 degrees of flexion. The examiner stands with their stabilizing hand on the patient's distal thigh and their distal hand is placed on the patient's heel. The examiner then immediately and laterally rotates the tibia with their distal hand while applying a downward force through the heel. A positive finding would be if there is pain, clicking, or restriction with the movement. A positive test is indicative of a medial or lateral meniscus tear depending on where the symptoms are located.